going? Dave Webster again here with HRP Associates, Senior Environmental Health and Safety Consultant, um, also a certified safety professional here out of the Farmington office, and I handle a lot of the industrial hygiene work for the EHS side of things. And today we're going to be talking about sample calibration. Um, we should really be doing this before and after any sampling we do for industrial hygiene, um, whether it's area sampling or personal exposure monitoring. Today we're using the TSI. 4100 series calibrator. Um, this is a secondary rotometer that uh, gets calibrated to a primary standard once a year. All right, so to start, we're gonna get our 4100 series calibrator going. I'm gonna plug in the power button. Usually I like to keep it unplugged. It doesn't drain the battery at all. Pull off this, put our dust screen on, turn on the machine, and then plug in our Tigon tube to the adapter with the appropriate media adapter on that end so we can begin our calibration process. So here we're, we're going to be working today with the Gillian Gill Air Plus. Just note, you know, depending on the sampling pump you have, the calibration uh, methodology could be a little different with how you adjust the pump. And we're going to adjust the flow to what we think is necessary. Now it's going to give you a flow on the interface on this. Um, never rely on that. We're just going to simply set it to what we think would be necessary for the sampling. So from here, we're going to get kind of make a guesstimate based on if it's a lower amount of flow, we're gonna have a lower um, level set on here. If it's a higher flow, then, then we're gonna up it a little. Now we're gonna look to attach um, one of our required sampling uh, Tigon tubes. Now for this one, we just have a basic PVC media. This would be a good one for any kind of like respirable dust. And we already have it hooked up with a respirable cyclone. So this is basically looking at the respirables. Here you see we have it hooked up. We don't have it set through here yet because we got to put our calibrator on top of here for the respirable uh, cyclone. So we're gonna put our calibrator attachment here. And then we're gonna look to attach it and we're gonna hook it up to our respirable cyclone adapter. It's gonna be inserted like so. And now again, we're gonna turn on our pump to whatever selected flow rate we think to start off with. But again, we're looking at our TSI 4100 series calibrator here. You know, this is probably a little low based on mo most analytical requirements for say respirable crystalline silica or something like that. So maybe we need to pause the sample, pressing stop on our sample, click back out. Now we're going to flow rate and we're just gonna kind of guess that we need a little bit of a higher flow. We're gonna click check mark. We're gonna go again. We're gonna repeat this process till we find the appropriate flow that we wanna use based on the sampling media. So now we're gonna to look to adjust our flow rate to accommodate for the additional flow that we decided we needed. So again, we're just gonna kinda of guesstimate, you know, we're gonna up our flow. Uh, I say we'll go there. So we're gonna click that, go back up, click run, let it run up. And we're gonna look at our dosimeter over here. From there, we might have to adjust accordingly based on, again, our analytical requirements. So now that we're done with our calibration setup, we're just gonna pop this off, throw this over the top. Now we're all hooked up, good to go. We're gonna look to put it on our employee's waist or uh, belt buckle or something like that. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm putting it here. And it's just gonna sit right on their shoulder in their breathing zone. Very important for your personal exposures here, folks. And then the employee's free to go about doing any of their specific tasks, whether it be to develop a stell, getting your eight hour time weighted average, whatever we're looking for to sample. Uh, obviously make sure to turn on the pump. Prior to doing so, click run. And there we go. Turning the sample off. Now we completed our stell sampling at the end of the day, or maybe our time weighted average sampling. And we paused our sample there, pull it off the employee, unhook it, fill out our chain of custodies as necessary and perform our post calibration, putting it in to our calibrator, our 4100 series here, keeping the same flow rate as we had, clicking run and recording the 4100 series calibrator reading. We can then average the pre and post calibration together uh, and, and develop a average flow rate that we then use to determine our sampling results. So next up, we have our charcoal tube sampling. This is good for a lot of gases out there and requires extremely low flow rates usually. So we're gonna look to set our pump at a low flow rate. We're gonna pull up pretty far down. We don't need anything high here for our charcoal tube. So basically we need to break the tube open using a glass breaker. So we're gonna look to break our tube like so with a glass breaker. You know, don't wanna be doing this, you know, with your fingers or anything like that. And then basically we look to see our arrows. Our arrows show us which way the airflow is going. So that's the direction of our flow rate. We're gonna insert it to our adapter. 
and now we also need to calibrate it. Then we're gonna insert it to our adapter on this end, and then we would turn on our pump, which we've already set up to a very low flow rate. We're gonna click run, and we're gonna record and we'll get flow over here. Now again, these flow rates are often very low. Just a little tip here, we like to adjust through here usually for our flow rates on our charcoal tubes. Once calibrated, press pause, record our pre-calibration. So we're gonna set this up like so, put it on the employee's waist, pull it around the side, and it's gonna sit over the employee's shoulder like so. We're gonna allow that to sit out for the duration of the employee's shift or for the stealth sample or whatever we're looking to sample for. Once complete, we're gonna look to pause the sample and pull it off the employee. Now we look to post calibrate, just like we did before, not adjusting for anything. Just gonna run the sample and record our post calibration. So next up we have a PVC filter. Just your basic filter, this gets like your total dust. Get our Tigon tubing. We just have a simple nose head attachment on this one. Plug it in like so. Now we're gonna need to calibrate it. So we're gonna use another little nozzle on our calibration. Plug it into our TSI 4100 series. Hook it up like so. So we're gonna adjust our Gillian Gill Air Plus pump to a flow rate we think is appropriate. Press run. And we're gonna look at our TSI 4100 series calibrator that we have connected. And that's gonna give us our flow rate. So if you know necessary, we'll we'll adjust from there. If it's appropriate, you know, we'll, we'll look at it and record it. But let's say that that was an appropriate calibration. Then we're gonna look to place it over the employee and record our pre-calibration. Connect it in the vicinity of the breathing zone of the employee. And we're gonna look to run the sample. Uh, we're gonna record observations throughout the workday. We're gonna pause the sample, pull it off the employee, and perform our post calibration. And we're gonna record those results. So now we've completed our sampling and done our post calibration. Now what we're gonna look to do is make sure all our samples are capped appropriately. We're gonna remove our respirable cyclone, um, put the cap that came on the top of this, put it back on, cap our materials, cap our glass cyclones as necessary put it all back, fill out our chain of custodies that we usually get from the lab. Um, and we're gonna send it out for analysis via a, a NIOSH EPA OSHA approved methodology, depending on the sample constituent that we're looking at. Send those results out to a lab for all these active samplers that we got going here. And from there, we're gonna get a lab report. From that lab report, we can interpret the data, comparing it to OSHA PELs, um, OSHA action levels, OSHA STELs where appropriate. You can even compare it to the ACGIH threshold limit values, NIOSH REL's, and, and any other data that's available out there for reference limits. From there, we can document a report giving you your findings. We also wanna make sure we're documenting all of this to assure we're in compliance with OSHA record keeping standards. And, and then from there, recommendations can be made. We can look further at processes, and whether uh, more sampling is necessary, instituting engineering controls, administrative controls, proper PPE, um, respirators if necessary, and so on, and, and, and make any of those recommendations from there. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Make sure you take a moment to hit the like button below, subscribe, and also hit the bell so that you can get notifications about new incoming content. Also, make a note, this isn't all that we do, lots of other stuff. So please check out our website and also keep your ears peeled for our podcasts because they're super awesome.